Today, we're looking at Diamine's Wild Strawberry. Hi, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. Down below, there's timestamps so that if there's only certain things you're interested, you can skip around to it. But if you've got the time, I would appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you like fountain pen ink reviews and are new here, I would invite you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Lamy All Star with a broad nib, wrote with it for a day, and used it to take the notes for this video. This first writing sample is done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper in order to have some kind of standardization to look at. There's additional writing samples later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form. And to make sure I keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shading. The Extra Fine is a slightly lighter tone than the 1.1. The Extra Fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 10 seconds to dry. The Medium is a darker tone, same tone that I got with the 1.1. The Medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 15 seconds to dry. The Scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. Tomoe River. No bleeding. The ghosting that you would expect for Tomoe River's 52 gram paper. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine again is a slightly lighter tone with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 17 seconds to dry. Now the medium is a darker tone, again the same dark tone as the 1.1 with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 23 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. And then Rhodia paper, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 12 seconds to dry. It is slightly lighter a tone than we got with the 1.1. Now the medium is the same tone that we got with the 1.1. Are you seeing a pattern that's going on here? I expect this to really hold up. The medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. I agree with Vita that we learn a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see is that it's actually more complex than you would think. There's a pink that pushes its way up and then a definite red. We have certainly two totally different tones or totally different colors being mixed to make this ink. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. The pink line across the bottom does look slightly more there. But other than that, these two chromatographies look exactly the same and you might not be able to tell too much difference if I didn't have that D in the upper right of the one where I let dry for 10 minutes. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would be afraid to use this ink in a note-taking situation because a lot of those word or a lot of those letters really started to blur out, and I would be afraid that if I was highlighting, I'm going to lose something important. Now water is reactivating and lifting it completely off the paper. That's only 30 seconds. And we're starting to get to see the white of the paper come through. I really do think that water is all it's gonna take to get this out of your pen. Flush did everything that water did and slightly more. At the very top of it, you start to really see the white of the paper coming through much more clear. So if water didn't do it for you to get it out of your pen, pen flush definitely will. Now the one-third bleach solution, even though you are not going to need it, it does completely obliterate this ink, completely removing it from the paper. It should take it out of your pen, even though you don't need it. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Now I'm going to link a video where I show how I test it and how I calculate the data. Diamines, 
Wild Cherry has a viscosity of 1.45, making this a very wet ink. It's in that red region. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. I average those, and for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diamine's Wild Strawberry has an average dry time of 16 seconds, so despite it being so incredibly wet, it has a normal dry time. Instead of finding inks that look like Diamine's Wild Strawberry, I would prefer to find a ink that complements its color on the page, like a nice blue, perhaps Birmingham Pen Company's Billy Eckstein Blues for Sale. The second writing sample is done on White Lines Paper, Original Crown Mill, and P. Berger. Here we have White Lines Paper. Now, White Lines Paper is not really made for liquid inks like this, and you do see quite a bit of bleed spots going on and a lot of show through. Now, the bleed spots that occur are not touching the paper underneath, but they do make the back of the page unusable for me. The 1.1 has feather, it has spread, it has no halo, sheen, and no shade, but the feathering's gross. The extra fine is a lighter tone than we got with the 1.1. It has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, so it performed very well with the extra fine. And in fact, looking at the back, the extra fine did very well there also. Medium is a noticeably darker tone, same dark tone as the 1.1. It has feather, little feathers, tiny feathers. I see them on the three, I see them in jumps, I see them in the, anywhere where it's really darker, like where I went over that H part twice, it feathers. It's just too much ink for this paper to handle. It has no, no spread, no halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. Now, Original Crown Mill. Original Crown Mill is a very nice laid paper. We have no no bleeding going on here, okay? We have tiny spots, which I can point out a couple, but they're really tiny. They would not stop me from using the back of the page in letter writing, where it's coming through a little here. That's me doing a scrubby, so it's stupid thick. And we have no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a lighter tone than we got with the 1.1. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. The medium is a darker tone, same dark tone as the 1.1, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. The extra fine and medium scrubby both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. And then this is P. Berger, a nice French rule to student paper. It's very inexpensive as a paper and in its quality, but it does certain things very well. Despite this massive amount of bleed that we see, it doesn't touch the page underneath. So you don't need a buffer page in between them, although if you really wanted to put it there just in case, you could. You couldn't use the back of the page. The amount of bleed makes for a ton of ghosting and show through. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine, as we've always seen, is significantly lighter than the 1.1. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, two seconds to dry. Medium, noticeably darker, same tone as the 1.1, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, five seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine and the medium show no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it, and that, is all I have in the writing samples. What do I think of Diamine's Wild Strawberry? It's just another red ink to me. It's hard for me to find reds that really are something. It's not bad, it's, it's not you, it's me. It's just a red for me. Now, while I don't care for red inks, to get the best writing experience from this ink and put its nicest color down on the page, I found a broad wet pen is what really did it. I do new ink reviews every single day, so if you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.